Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Manifest with Kathleen Cameron. And I just have to leave my screen up for a minute or something because I'm so obsessed with these movie posters. You guys did such a good job. Um, some of you really like took this to the next level. <clears throat> like some of these designs are amazing. Um, I want to know from you in the chat, like how was this exercise? Like what did it do for you and to you? Um, Cause it just looks like it was um, so much fun. So, so happy to see this. Um, look at these. Look at that one. I love the universe back there, the galaxy or whatever that is, nebula. Um, love that one too. I And also it looks like I'm going to be really busy uh, directing films. So I have to find time to do that. <laughs> um, so welcome back. <clears throat> Hope you had a good night. Um, there we go. All right. Hi. Okay. So uh, tomorrow I want to remind you, tomorrow is our VIP day. So if you are thinking about uh, maybe taking your transformation to the next level and want to be in our energy even more, then tomorrow is the day to come to. We'll also get a chance to um, ask Kathleen some questions tomorrow um, and just have a little bit more kind of intimate time together. So that's what tomorrow's all about. Same link, same time. So hopefully we'll see many of you for that. Um, and then today we have a really special announcement that we're going to make, I think, a little later on, probably closer to the end. Um, but we're really excited about it. And I think think you will be too. So um, let's get started. Kathleen, are you here, my dear? Sorry, yeah, I had to find myself to unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where am I? Where's my where's the screen? Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? How are we feeling? Are we excited? Um, those movie posters? Wow, you guys are like, uh, creative artists, that's for sure. Some of them, where you put like a different background, and then yourself in the forefront. It just looks so professional, like a real movie I would absolutely want to watch. And the, the titles were so catchy and mm, I just love it. And so, you know, I think one thing that we do with these exercises that is a bit, um, I don't want to, what's the word I want to use? I think we allow ourselves to dream and to go to these places. And then the next thought that comes in is, yeah, but that'll never happen. Or yeah, but it's just a dream or oh yeah, it's this. I remember Chris and I used to, we would drive. I remember one time we were driving in the car. We were like, what would we do if we won the lottery? Like $20 million, what would we do with it? And we allowed ourselves to really get, get onto the creative plane and answer that question. And we started having fun with it. And then we both were like, yeah, but that'll never happen. Okay, let's get, let's, let's stop this. You know, it's not, it's not real. Um, but from where we're sitting today, I have to tell you, like, it's absolutely 100% doable for you. This movie that you just created, that poster, it is absolutely there and done. And so one thing I'm going to talk about a little bit today um, is this idea that it's already done. And, I, and I, I just want us to always remember that it's already done. I talked about it on a little TikTok yesterday. So I was sitting outside and I was just really, really reflecting on today and some of the messages you guys have sent me and the things that you're saying. And I think part of um, part of where we resist our manifestations is that we don't believe it's already done. So I want us to remember that and I'll go more in depth about what that means today. But what we want to do today is we want to talk about the third step in the manifestation process and the fourth step in the manifestation process. So remember yesterday we talked about the first thing is to be self aware to be open to revealing things about yourself, getting to know yourself better, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what activates you, what makes you angry, where do you judge, all those beautiful things. Then the next thing that we wanna do is we want to be in spirit. So we're building. It's not like step one, okay, I'm self-aware, I'm done, now I'm gonna become into spirit. It's the first thing that we need to do, the most important thing to do is to become self-aware. Then we're going to add on to that continual self-awareness. We're going to add on to it the idea of being in spirit, the idea of our oneness, the idea of we are guided, we are supported. Uh, there are higher powers, the ideas of faith you know, all that stuff. So then we're adding that on. And then now we're going to talk about the intellectual mind. So three and then four, the physical body. So remember, we're spiritual beings with an intellectual mind and a physical body. Um, before I studied this material, I really, really believed that the physical body was like the be all and end all. It was like, 
Well, if I want to achieve more in my business, I need to move my body more. If I want to be a healthier person, I need to exercise more. I need to meal plan. I need to count calories. I need to whatever, whatever. If I want to achieve things in life, I want that promotion. Well, I better get to work early and I better stay there late. You know, these were the, this was the way my mind worked. And so you can absolutely manifest success in your life, in your relationships, in your health, in your business from the mechanical, physical body alone. You can. Many, many people have done it and continue to do it. But what ends up happening is that you end up hustling and grinding. You're in this work harder, do more attitude. There's never enough time. You get stressed, you get overwhelmed, you end up having what you want, but no time to enjoy it. So you want to create time and financial freedom through your business, yet you're hustling in your business that you have the money maybe that you want, but you don't have any time in your calendar to take a day off or to go on a vacation, or you can't travel the world like you wanted to because you're so tied to the heavy amount of the doing that you're doing. So what we want to do is we want to move you into the being more and then the doing will naturally follow. I'm going to give you a couple of examples as I talk about these today of how I have moved a new intellectual idea into the physical body first by being it. Okay, and then moving it into the body. So you'll see what I mean as I give you the the two examples. The first example, of course, I'm going to talk about is an abundance mindset. So you will um, hear me talk about that a lot today, but also in terms of the identity that I hold around health and how I did that with my health. So uh, this year I've made some drastic changes in the way that I behave in terms of my health, healthy habits, but they came from an identity that I chose to uh, become prior to now the physical things that are showing up. So you'll see the connection between these two things. Uh, But I wanna remind us that we're not gonna do this intellectual process or this physical process until we have done some of the other stuff, okay? Until we are in spirit, until we are in a state of flow, until we feel good, until we're vibrating well, all of that kind of stuff, then we'll do these things. Really, really important. Today, at the end of this, so maybe Tommy will try to end at like, quarter to 10 to um and we we are going to talk about something that tommy and i are launching today which was is so fun and there's a fun manifestation around it as well uh, that happened last night into this morning so i'm going to share that when we get to the end so stay on here until then um it's it's not a program or a course or anything like that um it's something that you guys can just go and enjoy so anyways we'll leave that to the very very end um but today i want to talk about this plot twist Okay, so we've now created the movie posters. You have now started to, you're on the creative plane. Your creative mechanism is now on and magnetizing what you desire. Okay, so the magnet is always on, the creative mechanism is always on. But before, you may have been magnetizing what you don't want. So a little example of this, saying things like, oh, my business just won't get better oh, I can't seem to get people to engage with me on social media. Oh, every month is the same as the month before. It never gets, you know, better. Or, oh, there's just not enough money in my bank account. I just don't have enough to be able to do what I want to do. I'd love to stay there, but I can't because I can't afford it. I'm broke. So all of these things that you might be saying them, you might be thinking them. Those are all things that are telling you where your set is. It's telling you what your creative mechanism is set to bring into your life. So it's beautiful awareness because that's how you can shift it. Um, I love so much Neville Goddard. He talks about if you want to really, really figure out what your assumptions are, pay attention to your reactions to life. And so, you know, we talk about you don't want to react. You want to respond. Okay. Responding instead of reacting comes from a higher level of awareness. Let's be honest. Okay, so the more you study yourself, the more you are in this material, um, the higher you start to rise in terms of your consciousness and your level of awareness, the more the uh, reacting will go away. But what Neville really means, though, is he's talking about reaction as in how do you and your environment engage with one another? That that's the biggest thing. So it's so good. If you were by yourself on a deserted island and 
nobody else was with you and you didn't have social media and there was nothing to really affect you, you wouldn't really have very many reactions to life. The things that you would react to life about would be changing weather. You know, it's too cold or it's too hot. It's too rainy. It's a draw, a drought. Maybe it's a sunburn, you know, but us today in this world, the higher we rise in our awareness, the more things that we invent and create, the more advancements in technology, the more things that we have to react to. Okay, so now we react to seeing something on social media that we really disagree with somebody commenting on our post somebody in our lives telling us they're upset with us because we didn't call them back yesterday. And it could even be that you're reacting to things in your own life that really aren't that big of a deal. Like there used to be a day where if I were to come on here and have to do a presentation and I wasn't prepared, that I would feel like this anxious feeling, this like, oh, but I don't have a PowerPoint presentation and I don't have seven pages of notes and I haven't practiced it. And what if they ask me a question that I don't know the answer to? And so I'm reacting to myself engaging in this 3D physical world without anybody even helping me do that. It's not like anybody said anything. It's just within me, I've, I've uh, created anxiety, worry, stress, overwhelm about these things. And so this is where you can really see what's going on and where you're currently set to and really, really what's happening. But one of the books that I love, and Tommy, I know we probably got a list going now, um, Living Untethered uh, by Michael Singer. What I love so much is he talks about the personal mind. And he really has you, um, he's really good at giving perspective. Um, so he's really good at uh, helping you to see a situation from a different perspective. So instead of seeing all that's going wrong, uh, what he does is he allows you to see how that thing that's going wrong is like not even a big deal at all. Like it's just like teeny tiny little, like minuscule thing that really has no effect on everything. I think about this, you know, um, if we really, really think about it, this universe and where we live is so wondrously beautiful. It is so amazing that we get the opportunity to see the things that we see, to experience the things that we experience, and yet we are so displeased with it. You know, um, we look outside and like I'm looking outside and I'm seeing the most beautiful fall colors, the most beautiful trees they're red and they're orange and they're yellow and they're green and it's just so stunning and it's such a miracle that these trees change color the leaves fall off the trees chris told me yesterday have a natural antifreeze that go through them so that they don't freeze and then when it gets nicer weather again the leaves just grow back isn't this phenomenal and the trees just know that everything's going to fall off and it's just the trees know that the leaves are just going to come back like nobody's worried that the leaves aren't gonna come back. We know they do. They come back every single spring. But yet we worry that we're not gonna come back. We worry that we're not gonna grow and flourish. We worry that our business isn't going to rise again after a fall in it. And so nature is such a beautiful way of stepping back and being like, look at all this beauty and abundance and all of these uh, wonders of the world. And here I am worried about a zit on my face or some stretch marks on my legs. It, see this perspective, it's just a shift in perspective. And Michael Singer is really good at that in that book. And it allows us to see that all these little things that we're giving our attention to really aren't uh, big deals at all. But we make it a big deal because it becomes our point of attraction. The creative mechanism is then like, Oh, you want more displeasure? You're gonna get more things to be displeased about. You want, I have no money? You're going, fine, I'll give you, I have no money. So remember that the universe does not uh, decide whether or not it thinks you are worthy of something. The universe does not decide whether or not it's going to test you today. The universe just responds to you, quite simply responds to you, that's it. So whatever it is you're putting out, it's exactly what you get back. The thing of it is, is we think that we mean what we're putting out publicly. No, 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 no. It's what you're putting out from your subconscious program. You're putting out what is deep within you. So this is why, you know, self-awareness and being really, really honest with yourself is so important. The more honest you can be with yourself, the more you will shift. Nobody can do this work for you. They really, really can't. 
And so it's really, really powerful. Um, but I'm going to talk to you today about this creating a new identity, right? Like a new, um, a new idea. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with the idea language. And then there's an identity that goes with the idea. So the two questions that I would ask myself then as we're getting to this stage. So you've now created your movie poster. And as you created that movie poster, there's something that you want to happen. There was something in this story that you wanted. Sometimes it's in the title. Um, sometimes it wasn't in the title, but whatever it is, this is where we're going to start from. What do I want? What do I want? And so this question cannot be answered in like four lines. If you try to do it in four lines, it's not going to work. Um, the more lines that you can do, the better. And then go deeper. So what do I want? I want successful business, good relationships, love in my life. I want time and financial freedom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I want more money. I want this. I want that. Then I want you to ask why. I want this because. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to even dig a little bit deeper into the whys of wanting it. And that's how you're going to emotionally connect to it. But the second question after you uh, ask that question, who do I need to be? This is the new idea. So I think sometimes what we do is when we're talking about what we want, okay, and we're going to use our intellectual mind to create it, we make the new idea the house. Okay, I want my dream home. And you focus on the dream home, the dream home, the dream home, the dream home. But what you're actually missing right there is that in order for you to have the dream home, you need to be a new version of yourself that has their dream home. So Kathleen Cameron making $90,000 a year lived in a $700,000 home. Okay, so my consciousness was set to a home at around 700,000. You think that would be a very big house, but it's not. Anyway, um, okay. <laughs> then I decided to manifest the home that I'm in now, which was nearly 3 million, this home. So I can't be 700 home Kathleen and be like, oh, I'm gonna manifest a $3 million house suddenly, stay the same, same thoughts, same feelings, same actions and expect myself to suddenly move into a home four times the size, far more luxury, far more conveniences. You need a house manager to run this thing. Like seriously, you have to create the new idea. So the new idea isn't what you want, but who you need to be to get what you want. Okay. So in the manifestation world, one of the things that I see so much and TikTok's really, really good at this it's all about visualizing what you want visualize what you want write down what you want write down what you want there is a place for that and i'm going to tell you where we want to do that but the understanding actually comes from it is a transformation of yourself in order to achieve those things and so this is why people who win the lottery they win 20 million dollars they go they spend it it's gone and then they go right back to living the way they were living before. Nothing has changed about them. Then there's people that win 20, 30 million and they decide to do personal growth. Okay, I need to go within now. I need to be the type of person that grows this money. I need to be the type of person that utilizes this in a beautiful way. I now wanna be abundant and prosperous for the rest of my life. So I'm gonna change me in order to achieve it. So I know somebody that that happened to won the lottery 20 years ago, and they have multiple businesses, they really stepped into the new identity. So this is the difference. And this is what we want to do. Um, what these um, events are really, really good at these events that we do are so good at raising your vibration temporarily. And I wish I could tell you that we could transform you permanently in two days. Um, but there's a lot of like humanisms that are here. So our goal is to raise you up enough to start taking different action, but it's the continuation of the work past this that is going to make all the difference for you. So I would decide that your story was okay. Like the movie is I started studying myself. I started to create new intellectual ideas. I put it in the body. And from that day, I continued to study myself till the end of time, till the end of my time here, maybe in this in this, you know, in this world that you're in, in this body right now. Um, so that's what I really want to make sure we understand. So what is it that I want? 
And who do I need to be to achieve that? So then here's the new idea. Okay. And so I say idea because we can work from ideas. So um, abundance is an idea, right? Lack and limitation is an idea. We can, we can grasp that. Okay. So if you're thinking from abundance, you're thinking about what? How much there is of everything. You see the glass half full, not half empty. It's all about perception and perspective versus lack and limitation. That's an idea. And you can think from that idea. I never have enough. The glass is half full. This is hard. My bank account is empty. I have no money. My business isn't growing. That's work. That's thinking from lack and limitation. So see how there's polarity. There's two sides to it. And there's a wide range of things. There's always a higher level of whatever it is that you want to experience. So even for me today, right now, I did a post yesterday about, you know, Diamond Academy and our revenue hitting 20 million since we started business. Well, guess what? There's a higher level of that, isn't there? It's not like suddenly 20 million. Okay, you're good. We're done. Let's go. There's always higher. So wherever you are, there's a higher level. So there's a higher level of abundance always. But what we want to do is we want to get you to a higher level than where you're at now. We want to get you operating on a different frequency of vibration. So I also think about these two polar ideas as well. The idea of success versus failure. There's higher, always higher levels of success if you choose to see it. I don't really talk about failure. I, I don't like the word because the only time you've ever failed is when you've decided that you have. There are opportunities for growth. There are learnings. For me, in manifestation, you cannot say that you have not manifested, that it has not worked. It's impossible to say your manifestation hasn't worked because it always works. You've just manifested what you don't want instead of what you do want. So like myself getting sick, Tommy and I did a YouTube video about like my worst manifestation. I can't remember what the title was, how I manifested the worst thing or something. Tommy, what was it? Yeah, my worst manifest, how I survived my worst manifestation. Yeah, how I survived my worst manifestation. I don't think I'm a failure because of that. No, if, if we have uh, months in the business that we don't reach the goal that I set out for it. I'm not a failure. I'm not going to accept that idea. I'm just not. Because thinking from failure creates more of the same. So instead, I think from, okay, so that was uh, great feedback. That was really great awareness. Now, where do I need to shift my focus now? Because clearly, I was focused on the wrong thing. And you can always look back and you can always see it. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see where that happened or I see where we went to, things like that. So there's always more levels of success. But what I love about this so much, uh, which is really, really good, is that um, there are people that see themselves as very successful, very successful people. They're like, yeah, oh yeah, I'm successful at everything I do. Um, I have an idea, I implement it and it works. There are people that are, I would say, very successful who if I were to say something to, if I were to say, oh my God, you've accomplished so much. You must be so proud of yourself. Oh no, I got way more I want to do. I haven't even, I didn't even reach my goals yet. Like they don't see it. So what my message is for you today is that you can see success in yourself right now in your life. And from seeing that success in your life, you can grow more success from it. But if you're never seeing it, if you're never celebrating it, if you're never allowing yourself to operate from the idea of success, then you're limiting yourself. You're resisting the very success that you desire to have. So how can we now see all the ways in which we have grown, all the successes that we have done, all the wins, uh, do all the celebrating, and then build from that? So I used to, in nursing, uh, we used to work with seniors and we used to do something called strength-based goal setting. And what we used to do is instead of finding their deficiencies or their weaknesses, 
So you can't walk very well. You can't get yourself dressed here very well. So this is the care plan we're going to create. We would actually say, well, what can you do and what can you do well? And we're going to build a care plan and a goal plan from that. That's what I love so much about this idea in manifestation. And it's not that we're ignoring the areas in our lives that we maybe have room for improvement. But what we're going to do is we're going to build an idea of success for ourselves and then say, where else can I be successful? What areas, what other areas in myself can I achieve success? And so maybe that becomes confidence in your decision making, in your perseverance, in your resilience, in your persistence, in your discipline. So then the success becomes something you already have and you identify as, and I'm going to actually ask for more of it within myself. So um, I was chatting with somebody a couple of weeks ago and they, uh, we were talking about motherhood and um, they were saying how people are always telling them that they are such a good mom and she just doesn't feel that. She's like, I don't know why they say that about me. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> could it be that that's actually how you are? And, um, and she said, no, you know what? I'm really good at things like housekeeping and house cleaning, and I'm really good at work, but I think the motherhood side is where I fail a little bit. And so, um, it was such a beautiful conversation. I said, wow, imagine how much more unstoppable you would be if you actually saw just how good at motherhood you are too. Just how much of a better mother could you be if you expressed that I'm a good mother in everything that you did. That, there's an energy in that. It's not that we know what we're doing. Come on, nobody gives us a manual when we decide to have children, but it's an energy. It's a confidence. It's a belief that, you know what? Maybe I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna do whatever it takes to help you to grow, to become the best version of you you can be. And we know this, our children become us. They become our thoughts, they become our feelings, they become our actions, and they become our little mini me's. And sometimes they rebel against some of the things that we do. Uh, so sometimes they want to go the polar opposite. If you were really strict in this one area, they will rebel away from that. But for the most part, they become us and our patterns and our programs. So by you seeing yourself as a good mother and expressing that and um, coming from that energy, they're going to become good parents themselves. So I think that's a really, really, um, uh, really important thing. So we talked about like abundance and lack and limitation, two different ideas, success and failure, two different ideas. I also put here gratitude and displeasure. Gratitude is uh, one of the most important things that you can do to help you to manifest, hands down. So the opposite of gratitude is displeasure. If you are displeased with something in your life, okay, you're displeased with something, you are asking for more of it. So you might say, I really, really don't want this thing in my life anymore. I'm done. I've had it. So maybe it's a family drama, for example. The more you focus on it, the more you don't want it, the more displeased you are with it, the more of it you are drawing, the greater your experience of that very thing will be. You're actually creating resistance to anything other than that because you're so focused on it. So instead, for the family drama, be grateful for it. What in your family can you be grateful for? that you have a family to have drama with. Then what I do is I, I, I would start saying things like, oh my gosh, every time I see my family, my relations with them are just improving. I am so grateful for that. Because then you're asking for what you want instead of, oh, I don't wanna go to this family function again because all we're gonna do is fight. I really don't want that. So you're asking for the very thing. And what you're doing then, what is the underlying assumption in that displeasure? Okay, so this word assumption, I go really deep in my programs talking about assumption, both in Millionaire and Modern Mentor. It's a little bit of a deeper concept to go into on a two day thing, but what you assume to be true will be your truth. What you expect to happen will happen. This is a law of assumption by Neville Goddard. It's so good because when you notice your assumptions, you will notice that you assume something to happen and guess what it always does. So the assumption is there's family drama every time I see my family. 
And when you expect family drama, guess what? The second, the second it's like it's gonna, it's gonna show up, somebody's gonna say something, boom, you react. And then you're creating it yourself. Whereas if you sat back and you said, okay, I love that every time that I see my family, we are, our relations are better. We're loving each other more. We're in so much gratitude. Guess what? You're going to get to that family function. You'll be like, I'm so excited to see you. I'm so happy. And the moment that something starts to happen, that's a little bit out of character, you switch it and you change the topic and you move to something else. So then you start acting in the assumption of something new. This is what we're going to do with manifestation, with your business, with your life, everything. You're going to work from a new idea. The other thing I wrote down here, I love so much, um, acceptance versus judgment. This is huge. This is really big. We all judge, no matter what we do it. I have not met a single person in my life that doesn't judge in some way. Now, I have met people that are at higher levels of awareness that the judgment is far less, far less. And so judgment is the meaning that you give something, right? So something happens in your outside world. It's just a something that happened. It's not good or bad. It just is. But then you give it meaning, you judge it, and then you have a feeling around it, which then creates a vibration, which then changes your point of attraction. So there are judgments about yourself that you make on a daily basis. There are judgments about others that you make on a daily basis. And then there are judgments that you make about this world that we live in, this universe that we live in, that impact you. So the more that you can move to acceptance, so this is the new idea we want to work more towards, acceptance. So we want to think from abundance. We want to think from gratitude. We want to think from success. We want to think from acceptance as much as we can. These are all new ideas that will allow you to rise in your consciousness. And can you imagine if you start thinking from these places every day, suddenly not a single thing changes in your outside world, but your experience of life is completely different. So suddenly when you go to bed at night, you don't have all of these negative thoughts going through your mind. You have less anxiety. You have less worries. You have less fears. One of the most beautiful things of uh, most people that come through my programs the most dominant thing is that I love myself now. I love my life. I experience more happiness and joy. I no longer have anxiety. Do you know how many people have cured their anxiety um, working with me? Huge. Um, the other thing too is physical ailments, depressions, uh, coming off of medications. Uh, what was the most recent one? Was it cystic fibrosis? Someone completely got rid of their cystic fibrosis symptoms. This is big. This is really big. So yes, we're here to help you to experience life better. But what I really, really want you guys to do is realize that, yes, you can make more money. Yes, you can have better relationships and stuff like that. But you can absolutely live a more fulfilling life uh, with simple changes in your perception. But we must continue to reprogram the subconscious mind so that it stays forever. There's a lot of years of hearing these other messages, okay? I think about the next idea I'm gonna tell you about collaboration versus competition. We have been our entire lives conditioned to compete. I, from a young age, wanted nothing to do with that. I was like, I'm out. I'm not playing competitive sports. No way. And I know that people have fun in competitive sports and I know it's physical activity and it's good for you um, and all that stuff. But what I didn't like about it and what I resisted and I was out of alignment with is that I don't want to be competing with you. I don't want to try to be faster than you. I don't want to be better than you. I don't want to score more goals. So for me, the things that I find fun that I love to do is to go for independent walks and, and compete against myself in my speed or my time. I loved lane swimming. Um, I loved things like uh, synchronized swimming. 
where we just swim together as a team and we help each other and we collaborate. So I can see it in my life where I've kind of rebelled this with this idea. But there has been so many times in my life, though, where competition has been such a not a motivating thing. Okay, so I will say that sometimes because I used to be somebody that wanted to be at the top of the leaderboards. Okay, so I wanted to get that promotion. I wanted to be the number one salesperson when I was in network marketing. I wanted to be the the number one coach in uh, Bob Proctor's organization. Absolutely. Those were all things that I strive for. But there were there are many, many times in my life where watching somebody else win made me feel bad. Why? Did that come from my divine self, a higher level of awareness where I see another woman succeed and I'm like, oh, oh, it feels bad. It just doesn't make me feel good. I'm envious or I'm jealous or um, sometimes it's even like, oh, you get kind of mad at them. You're like, I don't know what you're doing over there, but it's really pissing me off. You know, why is that? It's because of the programming and the conditioning and thinking from competition. It means that she's better than me. That's what the the subconscious program is believing. She's doing something better, which means then I'm less than. So I want us to really think about this. Do we really need to be competing? I think friendly competition can be helpful. I think things like leaderboards and stuff like that can really help you to push yourself. But I think the driving factor amongst all of that needs to be you're competing with yourself. So I want to be at the top of the leaderboard because I want to grow into the person that's at the top, not because I want to be better than so and so or prove myself to anyone. No, we're not going to play that game. So collaboration is really, really beautiful and really, really powerful. And not a lot of people do it, especially in business. I see people do it all the time and it's so fun now because I'm like, yes, you're collaborating. People have messaged me and asked me to collaborate on things. I think it's fantastic. And so you'll start to see probably a little bit more of that coming in, um, more of the collaborative approach because competition comes from lack and limitation. Competition comes from a place that there's not enough resources, so we're fighting over it. And we are not. We are not. <laughs> especially when it comes to money. I think about, um, I, oh, Tommy, what was the number? 5.2 million, uh, was it 5.2? I think so. He's unmuting himself. You're talking about the millionaires? Yes, yes. Yeah, 5.2 million millionaires last year. 5.2 million new millionaires in 2021. So, you know, when you were hearing about like the silent resignation and the great resignation, people quitting their jobs, guess what they were doing? Becoming millionaires. Okay. So whenever you think that there's not a lot enough money to go around, think about 5.2 million new millionaires around the world in 2021. And I think half of that was in the United States. (laughs) Two and a half million in the United States. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to like this? this, We're not talking about like a couple new millionaires or a couple thousand. This is millions of people that are now making millions of dollars. Like it is available and it is a mindset and it is a way of thinking. And it is those that want to get onto that frequency that are getting onto that frequency. And a lot of them are doing it with ease, I must say. Like it's really fun to watch all of these young people that are using social media. Oh, what are you going to say, Tommy? Well, in this article. So there's that means at the end of 2021, globally, um, the number of millionaires in the world was 62.5 million. It rose by 5.2 million. That's huge. Guys. Okay, we can't forget that. The next time that you have a thought in your mind that says that this is not possible for you, you need to remember how many millionaires there are out there. We have been made to believe that it is very rare. It's obviously not. Look at, this doesn't seem so crazy, does it? This is my millionaire program workbook. There were people who said you should not title that program millionaire because nobody will believe they can become it. I said, that's the problem right there. Totally. Anyway, this is so fun. But see how I'm getting you to just think from a new place. I keep using the, the, 
think from the new place. So before we get to interviews, we've got 15 minutes, but I want to talk about this idea of it's already done. Have you heard this before? It's already done. And I I had a one-on-one coaching client about three months ago, reach out to me and she's like, I don't get it. And I mean, she's already doing seven figures in her business. So she's very, very successful. And she's like, I just don't get it. I just, I just want to hear what you, what you have to say. I think about it this way. So everything that we have today, every like invention or creation, like this microphone, this beautiful microphone here, right, right here, this was created or invented by someone, right? Someone's mind said, we need a tool to help Kathleen's voice sound beautiful during her live events. No, (laughs) kidding. Um, But they thought there's a need for this thing. So let's go onto the creative plane, create an idea and come up with it to build this microphone. But the ability to build the microphone was always there. It was there 200 years ago. Just nobody thought about it yet, but it was always there. How to fly in an airplane was always there, but it wasn't until somebody thought about it, had a feeling of it, about it, thought from it, held the image, did trial and error to bring it into the physical form, did it come into the physical form. And so anything that you want for yourself and the version of you that has it is already there, already exists. It's about you becoming aware of it. So that's how I like to say what manifestation is. It's becoming aware of something that is already there. So if we feel like we're um, building something from scratch, we're being completely innovative, we're, we're the invention, we're the creator, we have to build it, like it just feels so hard. But when you say that I'm just becoming aware of something that's already there, then it feels so simple and so easy. So then how do I become more aware through study? And then how do I then match the vibration of it, match the frequency of it? Right? So then it's like, okay, so how does Kathleen today vibrate? What frequency is she on? That's the self-awareness piece. I can actually go in and I can ask myself, okay, so on a regular basis, I have thoughts like this, I have feelings like this, and I do this sort of thing. So then we go, okay, the new idea now, $100 million Kathleen. What frequency is she on? So what kind of thoughts is she having? What kind of feelings is she having? What type of action is she taking? And then I think from there, So many people will then do what that version does and they'll only do that. So abundance, for example, I want more money. So I'm going to create a new idea of abundance. I am prosperous. I am abundant. Money flows easily and effortless to me. I love money and money loves me. Okay. We're thinking from that idea. Lovely. And then they go out and they start spending money. Here we go. I'm going to spend more money, but they haven't changed their thoughts or their feelings around money at all. They haven't reprogrammed the subconscious mind. And so then all you do is go broke because you're still thinking from lack and limitation while spending money. So we want to think from that place first. So um, somebody commented, oh, I can't remember. They commented on my TikTok. Anyways, the comments from the TikToks are really good because they tell me where you're thinking from. So um, the comment was something like, I'm doing this, I'm thinking from having more money, but all that's happening is I'm getting more broke. Is that comment, that statement, something that you would ever say from an abundance mindset? No, you would not. Even the questions that are asked, how do I do this and that, comes from assumption that you don't know how. So instead, what I would say is, I'm thinking from the, um, I'm thinking from a true abundance idea. And I'm seeing all the abundance and the prosperity around me, but I want, I would love to become more aware of how much more abundant I can be. Do you have any tips or ideas? 
Like that is a great way to frame a question because I'm remaining thinking from the end and I'm saying, yes, I would like to become more aware of how to do this. And then boom, I can give you ideas. So then what happens is, is you're attracting to you the ideas, the people, the opportunities, the ways in which to, to bring more money into your life because you're operating from an abundance mentality. But when the question is, I have no money and I've done everything that every manifestation coach tells me to do and nothing's working, you're not thinking from the end. You're thinking from circumstance. You're thinking from your current bank account. So always be thinking from the place that it is already done. I don't know if Crystal's going to be watching this, but this was so much fun. Jesse, you're here. Yeah. Um, we were on a phone call with somebody and she wants to do something. And um, we were in the conversation and then she like asked me a question and I said, hold on. Or she started talking and I said, okay, wait a minute. Which Crystal am I talking to? Which one? That is such a beautiful little way of just being like, oh, okay, hold on. And you do this with yourself. You don't, you don't need me to do it. But so she went, oh, okay. I'm thinking from a past. Okay. I'm going to think from where I want to be the version of myself that I want to be. Oh, Crystal, you are on good, good, good. Okay. See, she's on, she can attest to this. It was so good. Just in a second like that, simply asking that question on the back of my goal cards the millionaire goal cards, it says, is this thought, is this feeling, is this action I'm about to take? coming from the end result from coming from my millionaire self or for, from my 50k a year self yeah pre miami crystal and post miami crystal yeah see how she's created this um dichotomy now right so now it's like okay who am i going to be today which version am i going to be today but it starts from thinking like that version i think this is where we miss we want to be the powerful the confident the resilient person we want to be that person. And so we go out and we do it. We be it. But deep down inside, we're worried it's not good enough. We don't think we're worthy. What will people think of me? Yada, yada. So start from the thoughts that you have within yourself. And then you take different action. Because trust me, when you get inspired, when you start to believe in yourself, when you become so confident, when you come from an abundance mindset, when you start accepting things, when you are in more gratitude, you move your body different. And you don't have to force it and see what crystal just said i was always her i was just disconnected from her before not anymore so how can you allow more of post crystal post miami crystal to come through i love the word allow because the only reason that you don't have the money that you desire is because you have not allowed it to come to you you've resisted it and you resist it from your current way of thinking so the more resistance that we release, the more we allow to flow to us. Release the resistance, the more will flow. So we're going to tell you, uh, maybe like in an hour, we're going to tell you about the little manifestation that uh, happened last night and into this morning. I didn't resist it in any way. I had no resistance to it. And that's why it came so effortlessly and so easy. And so what is resistance? Fear, worries, doubts resistance thoughts of lack and limitation you're resisting abundance when you're thinking in lack of limitation yeah really fun um the other thing and i love this word and i want you to just think about this conviction okay so when we're creating these this new idea okay who do i need to be the more conviction that you have in this new idea, the more powerful you'll be able to move your manifestations into the physical world. So I like the word conviction. How can I convince myself? Okay, so this is the reprogramming of the subconscious mind. How can I convince myself I am that version? And when you have conviction in something, like you can feel my conviction coming through in everything that I say with this material. I have convinced myself that this is absolute truth. This is the truth that I work from now. I'm convinced. And so because I am convinced, it works for me. So how can you have more conviction in 
your goals, have more conviction in your vision. How can you have more conviction in the success, more conviction in the abundance and the prosperity? I love the word conviction. Such a powerful tool. And so you can see then that the more convinced you are that you're winning, the more winning will happen. Okay, so um, somebody mentioned, I think yesterday, uh, talking, it might have been Christine when she was doing her interview about her, her evidence journal or her win journal. This is so powerful. You can convince yourself something is not working or you can convince yourself it is. It's entirely up to you. Any idea in your consciousness that you focus on will harden into fact. It's inevitable. So let's convince ourselves that it's working. Let's convince ourselves of all the ways in which we're winning. Because there's a vibrational equivalent to that. You will then vibrate from a different place. I will often say, let's get back up onto the creative plane. Like, And I think sometimes people are like, well, what do you mean by that, Kathleen? What I mean by that is let's focus on all the ways in which things are possible and doable. And let's get out of the thinking that it's not in any way. I don't want to entertain the idea that things are falling apart or that things are not coming together or that it's taking too long or it's not what I want. We want to stay in the creative plane. It feels so good. So what if X, Y, Z happened? What if we could do yada, yada, yada? What if this and that? Instead of trying to convince yourself of the other. So a wind journal and evidence journal is so beautiful. It becomes something that you build upon. I I started a wind journal so long ago, but so many winds came so fast that I just lost track of it. And now it's just an everyday thing. But can you imagine if I had an evidence journal? Holy, start it now. Start it now, start writing it out. And everything is a win. It's not big or small. So the feeling of accomplishment, the feeling of accomplishment, that feeling is one of the most powerful feelings of manifestation. Because when you feel that you have accomplished something, you vibrate differently. You vibrate with pride with gratitude, with joy, with happiness. Sense of accomplishment is so beautiful. It's like, I did it, yes. So many people will say like, well, I haven't done anything really big in my life, so I didn't manifest $20 million, so I can't feel the way you feel. Malarkey. I had the feeling of accomplishment with every little thing. I would manifest a coffee and I would celebrate it. And and yes, I did it. I would manifest um, somebody canceling a massage. I wanted a massage. I know I've never said that word before. Have I taught me malarkey? Where did that even come from? I wanted to say something else, but I'm just trying to, you know, (laughs) I'm just trying to be, you know, so these weird words come out. Um, But yeah, so, you know, I love to like get on the feeling of accomplishment for all of the things. You know, every, every single thing that I bring into this physical world, I'm like, I did it. Yes, there we go. You could even do it with some of the negative things. You're like, man, I'm powerful. Even, I'm even powerful enough to keep myself from going to Miami. Wow, look at that. It's so true because I believe in the law of cause and effect. So when I win, I don't celebrate and say, well, look at me, I'm so good, I'm amazing. And then when I don't win, I'm like, oh man, that border, they didn't let me in. I recognize that it's myself, always. Good, the bad, the ugly, you know? So how can you have this feeling of accomplishment more? And then people will say to me, well, even if I don't like, well, what if I don't have any wins? What if there's nothing to celebrate? There is always something to celebrate because you have an imagination. That's how you reprogram your subconscious mind. So right now, today, in this moment, you can feel the feeling of a future accomplishment. And feeling the feeling of a future accomplishment, which is really an accomplishment that's already done, right? 
you can feel it right now. And then right now you start operating with a feeling of accomplishment, which then brings more accomplishment. So how you bring your fourth dimensional uh, thing from the imagination into the 3D physical world is by experiencing it now in this moment in the present. You pull it into you and you pull it towards me. So psychologically you're moving ahead and you're bringing it physically and then your physical world follows suit. This is a little bit deeper, but yes, this is how we're gonna do it. Maybe, Tommy, let's start tomorrow with a visualization, okay? VIP day. We will start with a visualization. We'll do a guided one. Um, We'll start us off with the feeling of accomplishment right at the beginning of the call, okay? So we'll do that tomorrow because today we got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, Is it 12? It's 11, interview time. Uh, Tommy, do the interviews. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about how to move it into the body. And then we're going to do our special little announcement. Okay. All right. I'll be back. Thank you, Kathleen. So good. How are we all feeling? Tingly? Good. <laughs> okay, uh, let's do this. So um, first up is going to be Helen. Helen, my dear, are you here? Here she is. I'm here. You found Hi. me so easily. Hi, Tommy. I, did. Well, I had you already pulled up, you know, that's how I do. How are you? It's nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you too, Tommy. So tell me, when did you join the diamond academy family or start wherever you want to start (laughs) okay no problem um it's so funny i was listening to kathleen this information is so good and i'm so grateful to be here and so grateful for all of the diamond academy team um i was listening and i was saying oh am i it looks like what kathleen was saying am i prepared am i ready where am i at you know and i was like am i worthy enough to even talk about all my accomplishments can you imagine um go ahead tell me of course you are, but we all do that, right? <laughs> well, I was looking at, I have my I Am The One course book here, right? Which I did with Kathleen and the date everything began to change was the 25th of August um, is when I did the I Am The One uh, and then I uh, entered the Mindset Mentor, um, so the Mindset Mentor, the Mentor Program, um, uh, the Modern Mentor, thank modern you. Mentor, yeah. I a mindset mentor here, the Modern Mentor. Straight after, that, but, <laughs> I know, it probably sounds like it. I am, um, but I'll rewind a, a little bit just for you in the sense of, I um, I came across Kathleen probably, um, geez, it could be going on two and a half years um, right now. Um, I had done uh, the Thinking Into Results program about six or seven years ago. And the, there's so much I could, uh, I've lived a good life, long life, like so much of my story I could tell you. But what I would say is, is that I was probably someone who, um, when I visualized things, you know, they came to me, but I never really attached myself to them. So Kathleen often talks about like the law of detachment and just letting them go. So um, I'm from New York originally. I wanted to, I think, live in Europe. I, I wanted um, to have a career that allowed me flexibility and allowed me to kind of uh, do what I wanted to do and 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 that happened now as, as Kathleen says if you actually look back you probably can find out that you did create these things but at the time I would have just thought that was was normal so um I had two successful businesses um one being a fitness um franchise a women's one that I, I ran um for about 10 years but um it went sideways, you know, it went backwards, really. Um, and now as I realized it, I, I realized that I was always reacting to this. And But I couldn't find my way out, Tommy. Um, and uh, it was really difficult at the time. And I had a friend say to me, why don't you look at this? You know, and I, uh, I, I because if you can imagine when things go on with, well, for me, when things go on professionally, they affect everything or personally. I mean, it's we're all, you know, it's 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 all of it together. So my marriage was suffering. My professional life was suffering. Um, my friendships were suffering because my identity was wrapped around this. And and and, and Kathleen often talks about identity. So um, I had started and was referred again uh, as what I was doing as a financial advisor. And and I knew for the first seven months, like it wasn't going anywhere. And I said, no, like, you know, what is insanity doing the same thing over and over again and, you know, expecting different results. And at the lowest of the low, which I know was where my growth was, I um, I met a friend and I know now that this all was coming through people, you know, looking to help me. And I get quite emotional when I talk about that. 
But I met a friend who said, look, why don't you just explore this, 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 and I had never done any kind of personal development. Mm -hmm. And I stepped right in and as Kathleen said, I'm quite coachable and I, I, I went for it, but, um, and I changed from what was practically no income to a six figure income, you know, in the space of a year and a half. And the end result is, as, as Kathleen often talks about, which was to, to, you know, go on this trip to LA and, and do, get this villa and take my family take my two young boys at the time that were seven and five I mean Pierce my youngest used to say to me mommy why are you working all these late hours Where, what are you doing what, when are you going to be around and, and I um I was like um eh, okay I'm going to take him to this and I wanted this award you know so I got this award he's like are you getting one of those awards I was like no but I was darn sure I was going to get the award the next time top of the leaderboard as Kathleen said so fast forward and um six years in, I'd achieved a lot of what I wanted. And, and just as, as Kathleen said, I was like, you know, there's more, I just feel it, you know, I, I feel I even wrote this down in one of my journals, like hungry for more, I just felt this wanting fulfillment. And I remember um, just saying at the end of last year, you know, um, I really want to step in and, 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 and be a mentor to people, you know, because this had come very easily for me, I, I, I fell down on my knees, but then I, I came back. So I, entered to, to, to be a, 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 a you know mindset mentor with, with the Bob Practical Gallery Institute and for a year and a half <laughs> I hadn't done anything right <laughs> I was going back and forth and and um I kept watching Kathleen and 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 I and, and I joined um the modern mentor uh, just I guess about six weeks ago but um I know, and I said this in the little bio I gave to 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 Jennifer and, and Deborah Gatola, I know that uh, as Kathleen says, uh, she uh, she did not come uninvited. You did not come invited, uninvited. I was asking, and it, even as she's just saying things here, I was asking for something that would would help me. I, I needed to, to um, my identity. There's so many things I, I needed to say. Who is Helen? You know, who's helping all of these people and is operating at a certain level. Um, I even discovered something so interesting, Tommy. I discovered that. I had this hundred grand as like the be and end all. And I, and I didn't even realize the reason I did was I had remembered seeing, you know, um, salaries from my family, you know, 20 years ago where it was a hundred grand. So I thought if I got there, you know, and it's just as Kathleen says about the millionaires, I was like, why is it 25 years ago? We thought a hundred grand was a big deal. And here we are 20 years later and still a hundred grand is a big deal. Why, why is that? You know what I mean? Why aren't we, thinking bigger and, and, and more. So I'm rambling, but I'm just, I You're mean, fine. Kathleen has, and the Diamond Academy have um, ha have the missing piece for, 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 for me, Tom. <clears throat> what do you think that piece was exactly? Or are you still well, figuring I, it out? No, I, I know what it is really. Um, for me, um, well, there's a combination thereof. One thing is the authenticity of Kathleen and how she operates and her, 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 which goes across the team, right? Because you attract the same thing, but is this, um, this, this, this wanting to serve, right? So that's, that's what attracted me. But what I know for me, which I didn't even know myself at the time is I would, I did and achieved what I have to date with a lot of hard work, yeah. you know, and a lot of, um, uh, maybe masculine, you know, energy, really meaning do, 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 do. I've, I've always been that. And this whole releasing or, 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 or really tying into um, letting go, like the judgment part, I actually asked just out loud. I said, well, someone help me with judgment because I actually judge my 17 year old son so much, but guess what? That's because I'm judging me and he's so much like me, but I, so um, it's, it, in summary, it's this feminine energy, this this yeah. tapping into of 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 um of being. That's so good. When you decided to join the modern mentor, was it like a difficult decision? No. <laughs> I mean, I I I am. Um, if if I if I be straight up um, about. Or a couple of weeks before, I don't, I'm not sure of exactly the timeline. I had looked to say, okay, I need to, I, I need to do something 
to move me on. And I came this close to, to doing a different program, um, but it didn't feel right. And I knew it didn't feel right. And when I let it go and I said, I'm not going to do it, which was a very difficult decision for me, um, this showed up. Okay. And when it showed up, um, because it marries the awareness piece and, and being who you are, which you have to be, your belief, right? That's the big, um, if you saw my movie piece, it said believe, right? This belief. And then the business side, you know, the, the, the simplicity around the business side. I mean, okay, I've been in business 20 years. I've been an entrepreneur since 2003. But, but um, you know, I haven't made 20 million. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to learn from the person who, who, is, who is doing it. So it, it was a difficult decision. In, no, it wasn't a difficult decision, Tommy. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't a difficult decision because if I decided from who I wanted to be, then, mm -hmm. then that's so, yeah, you know, yeah. then that's, yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you kind of already have something figured out that a lot of people don't have yet or that it takes a little while to figure out that you figured out that it's important to invest in yourself where did you learn that and how important has that been for you um tony i said tommy thank you for that that's such a um when i invested in the first you know six or seven years ago um was it four grand or five grand whatever it was then i i, I invested whatever triple that here you know i think that in uh I, I okay I'm gonna give you an analogy the, the, the difficult thing I'd say is I never had done that before on me but that was parallel to how I was with everything you know I have no problem going on out and buying a pair of Kanye West sneakers for four hundred dollars for my son you know and you know what I mean and my, my husband would be like I'm in a I'm in a Kmart pants you know you know what I mean so but but for this I remember saying to a client I, I remember even saying to myself like we'll invest in um a new printer for our business. We'll invest in all of these things that aren't going to help us grow. Whereas investing in me, so so I, I you know, I've kind of I've I've kind of realized that, and 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 it's yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Um, what would you say to um, somebody who's maybe new to this kind of information? What would your recommendation be, like, to do from this point forward? Yeah. I, um, if someone is really new and looking at this and, 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 and deciding if it's for them, as I've always said, like I'm 53 and I always think I'm very old, but, um, I wish I had met this. I met, I wish I had, <laughs> thanks Tommy. <laughs> I, I uh, genuinely, I wish I, I was, um, I don't want to say skeptical, but I was someone who's just like, just do it, you know, um, in the sense of. I never thought I needed a mentor, but what I've recognized is, is that it, it, it has allowed me to dream beyond what I ever thought was possible um, and really create a life for myself. So I went in, um, you know, with this, what I would say is don't hesitate and do it, but, 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 but the rewards, like even if I've come in this to take me to the next level for my business, you know, I mean, I was very honest you know, I, I, I'm one of 50,000 a month, you know, I, I want, I know where I want to be, but I have recognized even the dynamics of how I I interact with my children and my husband and my family have completely changed. And as, 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 as Kathleen said, you will, you will notice you're more calm. You will notice that your, 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 the way you are interacting with the world is so different. Um, so uh, I I um I would do anything I could to to move myself closer to this information. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, well, th this is so good. Thank you, Helen. I hope you guys are listening because there's like there's like so many good little nuggets you can pull out of what she said. Is there anything you want to say that you haven't said? Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I I guess I would I would um. I will, I would say what what Kathleen said. I would I would echo her sentiments in that um, the biggest way you can shift things is is, is gratitude. Um, when I first started writing down gratitude many years ago, I I couldn't even figure out what I was grateful for. 
that's how bad a place I live in. Yeah. And and sometimes just grateful to be around this community, you know, and be uh, here. So all I would say is, you know, um, if this is something that you are being pulled towards, um, write out what you're grateful for and, and see what, what, what can come for you. Yeah. What's next for Helen? Um, uh, we've got a load more, more lessons of, of modern mentor. <laughs> mindset, modern mentor, I said it right. I keep saying mindset. <laughs> I, I was writing down here. Um, well, what's next for, for, for me, Tommy, is, 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 um, is, is action, you know, just, just, I'm, 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 you know, 50,000 Helen a month, Helen more and more, you know, but, but most importantly, um, as, as happier than God, right. Which I absolutely adore that book is, is looking after everyone first and then me. Right. So, um, I, I know as many people might feel on this, that you're meant for something so great, so great. And I always wondered why, you know, maybe I had this gift of, 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 of always just saying, I'll do this, I'll do this, you know, and then the gift was thrown the other way when I had that um, negative experience coming into the business, but I know I created that, but, but I know that brought me on the journey to here. So what's next for me is um, more and more abundance and growth. And I'd say at the next live event, I want to be. Awesome. Okay, I feel it. That's so good, Helen. Applause for Helen. Thank you so much for sharing. That's amazing. Next up, we're going to have Jaxlyn come up here. Hi, Jaxlyn. Hello. How are you? I am so good. Oh, good. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So um, I, I know just a teeny, teeny little bit about you, but no one else knows what I know yet. So just start from the beginning. All right. So in 2019, I had the best financial year of my life and I was expanding in a very big way. But like everyone else in Canada, in March of 2020, I had to legally shut down my business. Mm -hmm. However, unlike everyone else, I wasn't allowed to reopen for over 547 days. So it was almost two years and I lived off all of my savings for those two years. And it was really hard for me to pivot at the time because I had contracts in place that I needed to be able to deliver on. So I had to be ready for the day I was allowed back to work. Well, when that day came, I was asked to participate in medical discrimination and I refused. I was instantly fired and I had spent two years living off of all my savings. There was no money coming in and now no money in the future. And then February came around, and due to the events that were occurring here in the capital, I was told that my bank accounts were going to be frozen because of some donations that I had made. Whoa. And honestly, things couldn't have gotten worse. It was literally my rock bottom. I was in complete survival mode, and I was experiencing massive stress from everything that was occurring. Um, I learned about Kathleen in May, and I contacted Deborah. And a few days later, I signed up for Millionaire. And when I signed up for Millionaire, I had no money and I only had room on a credit card. I literally warned Deborah, she can vouch, when I enrolled in the program that I told her it was more of a risk for you guys to take me on as a client than it was for me to pay for the down payment of the course. Wow. My third month into the program, I couldn't make the payment. And I called Deborah and I said, I can't make the payment. How long until I'm booted out of here? She literally laughed and said, Jacqueline, we're here to support you. We want you to reach your goals. And we're going to ask you how we can help you be successful. And honestly, Tommy, everything in that moment shifted for me. Deborah made me feel so emotionally safe and supported. I was able to quantum leap. And three weeks later, I called Deborah and I said, I just paid it full. Oh my God. <laughs> the universe helped me find a way. And I paid in full and we celebrated. And since I paid in full, honestly, things started snowballing so fast and it's very exciting. I came into Millionaire not knowing at all what it is that I wanted to do for the future. I just came in knowing that if I allowed myself to be coachable, I would have a massive quantum leap. And now the snowball is getting bigger and bigger. And I just launched a clothing line called Wear High Vibe. And it's all about embodying your vibe and wearing it. 
And I'm honestly, I'm so excited because I am literally, as Kathleen said, I'm holding my vision in my hand. And if someone would have told me this eight months ago when I was experiencing all that crazy trauma, that this would be the outcome, I would have told them that they were crazy. (laughs) And I'm really beginning to embody and become my millionaire self. And for the first time ever in my life, I am really, truly like proud of myself. I'm ready to share and expand online in a way that I've never felt safe or confident before. And I just want to say the best thing about Kathleen and the Diamond Academy is the space that they hold. My social circles were completely destroyed during the pandemic. I lost a lot of friends and I wouldn't have been able to have a quantum leap without being able to turn Zoom on every single day and embody the millionaire energy. It would have been so difficult to make that vibrational jump without the social support. And the greatest thing I've gotten out of the Diamond Academy is literally world-class friendships. I can confidently tell you, Tommy, that I have over $10 million worth of friendships. And I know that it sounds strange to put a price tag on friendships, but everybody on this call, please ask yourself honestly if your current social circle can take you to your $10 million self. Because I know that mine can And it's like a thousand X gain on my investment into this program. And now I know that for me, it's my responsibility to step into this $10 million woman. And what I want to ask everyone thinking about joining this amazing community is how are you going to get from where you are to where you want to be? And if your environment is not a safe space for massive growth, it is going to be slower and way more difficult to get your, like to get to your goals, your investment in the diamond cat in the Diamond Academy is access to world-class coaches that you get to Zoom call with every single day to keep you in the vibration and accelerating towards your dreams. So I ask, what is that worth to you? Because to me, it's it's been worth $10 million. So that is my exciting transformation. Oh my God, like boom. (laughs) Okay, I wanted to let you finish there, but I have have a lot I want to ask you. This is so good. First of all, I need to give you applause first. (laughs) Um, Okay, this is so good, Jacqueline. Oh my God. So let me back up. How in the hell did you, like, going through all of that, then decide, okay, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a $10,000 program. How did you, how did you make that make sense in your mind? It didn't. Anybody would have told me that it was crazy, but I literally was like, okay, I am at rock bottom. I have this space in my credit card. I have no money. All the stuff that I'm doing is not working. (laughs) So the only place I can go up is up or I'll be homeless. That's it. That's for the options. So, um, so it was, uh, it was irrational in the sense that like, it doesn't make sense, but I have nothing, I had nothing to lose. All that I had was mentors that, and Kathleen saying, I did this during the pandemic. This is my business. And I was like, I want to learn from her. Yeah. Oh my God. That's amazing. So, um, that you said now all of this has just started to come together since you paid off your program and all that stuff. And it started to snowball, like, tell me more about what's in the snowball. (laughs) Oh, okay. So, um, I'm going to be completely honest. I am a very private person. So being on social media and doing all these things is uh, like, I don't love to do that. Yeah. But after having all the heat that I had on me this year in February, I was like, really, this is it. This is the worst thing that could happen publicly. And I'm so now I'm starting to go on social media. I'm starting to promote. I'm really working hard on my business and I'm, I'm going to dive more into coaching. So everything's just kind of coming together. Oh, and so I good. literally, I woke up in the middle of the night and channeled this. And so I just, everything's just coming so easy. What does your shirt say? It says, holy shift. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you, have to, you have to let us know where we can buy your stuff. Oh, wearhighvibe.com oh, okay. and Instagram, wearhighvibe. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, keep dropping that link. That's amazing. Um, this is so good. Um, Kathleen, are you here? I just feel like you might need to come and talk to her. <laughs> I, okay. So see these beautiful cabinets behind me? <clears throat> yeah. They have important things that I need during these trainings. And so I had to pull out my roll of toilet paper, like literally, <laughs> because that's all I had in there. You're making me cry over here. 
like what you're saying about your transformation and like it's everything that we know here and the way we designed it with an idea in mind like we wanted to create a community and we say community like to be unified not sameness but unified like you're speaking to me everything that was in my mind of what I wanted to create and how I wanted all of this to be so it's making me very emotional I'm like trying to touch up without like wrecking wrecking I'm like oh no oh no like and Tommy usually is the one that makes me cry like this but um I think this is so lovely and you just affirmed for people social proof is uh one of the most powerful things that like everything that I just said you know like thinking from success instead of thinking from failure thinking from abundance instead of lack and limitation gratitude instead of displeasure all of those things are shifts you've made in your thinking which are now changing your outside world which is so beautiful um i gotta order i gotta order something i i can't wait to get on there and order something <laughs> Give me oh your my god like <laughs> do you have an affiliate program like come on it's in the works people have asked me <laughs> <laughs> right this is so good uh, i'm so happy for you and you know what um you're gonna you're gonna hear about something in a couple of minutes but um when i was talking about my story with tommy recently i talked about how you know there's always a moment where things are really bleak and the people that that will rise out of anything you know people that will rise from the darkest moments are the ones that are willing to make the most unrealistic decision at that time and you know and i think it's the glimmer of hope that you still held that allowed you to say well you know there there must be a way and this is going to be the way and so i'm so i'm so proud of you for doing that like for for choosing you and this is what i mean like the road is not always like this it's like this, but it's truly um, stepping into and and creating the embodiment, the the complete picture. Your whole life will change because you're changing it yourself by the decisions that you make. I keep seeing Tommy, your cat's tail, and it is the cutest thing. <laughs> oh my god, this is the world we're in. I keep seeing this kitty cat tail coming like this. Um, yeah, and I also want to just bring up Helen too, real quick, Helen. Um, man like from the moment that you there was a click i don't know what it's been uh, um and i think this is important for us to mention is and i know that you've talked about just how emotional some of this stuff has become and um i'm gonna get emotional saying it but this information this material this way of living life and experiencing life like i'm wrecking my makeup here um it's emotional because it's closer to the divine it's emotional because it's closest to the real you and so if you are feeling emotional during these events these trainings and things like that it's because you're finally letting go of and you're releasing all the things that were keeping you from stepping into that true version of yourself and um this is what is different about me and about diamond academy is that I really want to take you out of the masculine and the do 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 and the scared and the scarcity, and I want you to really feel what it feels like to be um, the version of you that has it all. And um, these are just examples, a few examples of what's going on in our community. So I'm so grateful for both of you, Helen. I'm so happy for you um, and the shifts that you're having like and i'm gonna buy this um you gotta get your affiliate link up so that i when i get my clothes i'll post it with my affiliate link on my socials okay um i'm so grateful for the two of you thank you thank you thank you um okay. uh, stay like get in my energy okay people like get in this let's go it's ready to to make some change we're gonna talk about that tomorrow but i hope you're feeling just as inspired as i am Another round of applause for these two. Okay, oh, thank man. you, ladies. Kathleen, are you ready to continue yeah. to pull it together? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man, oh man. Um, this, this life is uh, really, really something to be so grateful for and the opportunities that we have. Um, are really, really powerful. So obviously there's something in me that really needed to hear this stuff.
yesterday and today. So thank you for sharing. Um, last thing I want to talk about, okay, um, is now how we, how we move this into the body. Okay. And moving it into the body sometimes can be the hardest thing because the reason that we often don't do something isn't because of the thing, but it's the thought that we have about the thing. You know, the thought that if I launch my business, that it might not go the way I want. So I procrastinate in launching my business or I have this new program ready to go, but I'm scared that people aren't going to love it. So I don't launch it. Or it's the feeling that sometimes if I do this thing and I go all in and I put myself on the line that I'm going to be embarrassed that it's not going to work out or something like that. Like there's all these feelings. I'm not good enough to go live on social media. I don't know enough. I don't sound like so-and-so, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so <clears throat> the important thing to remember is that if you're doing this manifestation process in the way that I have said it, by the time you get to the action piece, you've done work so that the action is effortless, okay? Easy and effortless. I think sometimes people think that the effortless way is to sit and do nothing at all, is to just like twiddle our thumbs at home and the money just stacks up in the bank account. But if we think about the version of ourselves that have everything that we've ever wanted, you are not somebody that is just counting cash in your bank account, sitting at home doing nothing. You're making a significant contribution to the world, okay? The law of compensation is a very, very powerful thing. In Happier Than God, Neil Donald Walsh talks about, we, we really reveal our true self and we become our best version in the service of others. I become my best self by helping you become your best self, not the other way around. So this is the action piece. The science of getting rich, Wallace D. Waddell says, our thoughts are the magnetic power that bring everything we want to us, but our action is what makes us open to receive. So this is why action is necessary but easy and effortless action is what I want you to be in. I want you to feel like Helen. I want you to feel like, how do I say it, Jacqueline? Did I say that right? Um, I want you to feel how they feel and taking action. You know, this is different than I have to do this today. I need to check this off my list. I, I need to make it happen. And so what we wanna do is we wanna move the knowledge, the ideas, into the physical body we want to embody it and i have a really fun example that i want to share with you so i in in december so i cannot believe it's coming up december in a couple of months but every december i do an event and it's almost like a uh, reflection and review so reflect on the previous year every single month we go through what did i love about that month what didn't go so well about that month what am i taking with me and what am i blessing and releasing we've called it reflection we've called it bless and release not sure what we're going to do this year but we'll do it again we, we do it every single year but when i did that for myself i made a decision that 2022 was going to be the year that i was going to make my health a priority <clears throat> now, I want to make sure you guys understand that I do not mean it's the year that I want to lose weight or shrink my body, okay? No, I don't want that. I don't want to lose weight and I don't want to shrink my body. I want to love my body. I want to treat my body well. I want my body to last. I want longevity. So I've released a lot of the judgment that came with trying to look a certain way. I now want to feel a certain way in my body. Okay, so I've had to release a lot of the judgments around it. Um, so I decided that in January I was going to do that. And then I sat down and I asked myself, who is the healthy, like, what is healthy Kathleen? You know, when I've embodied health and longevity, what does that mean to me? And what I realized and the biggest difference between past versions of me and this future version that I was creating in January was that this wasn't a short term thing. I wasn't going to change something for six months and then go back to old habits. It was literally, how am I going to show up from this moment forward? And I wrote things down. I wrote, she walks every single day and makes it a priority. I wrote down, she doesn't drink any alcohol. She doesn't uh, enjoy high, highly sugary foods and um, 
<clears throat> deep fried foods. Like I just started writing out all these things that I see the healthier version of me meditates every day, doesn't judge her body, but loves her body, things like that. And then the moment of truth came. It's time now to move that into the body. I nurtured the beliefs. I created the new idea. I asked myself, who do I need to be to achieve and accomplish these things? Now what's going to happen next is going to be move it into my body. I need to do it now. So I decided the first thing that I was going to do is stop drinking. So this was in January. And then it's not like I was a big drinker or had a drinking problem or anything like that. It was just something that I noticed I did socially that I really didn't like the way that it made me feel after. So the next morning I would feel a little bit groggy and, you know, not myself. And then it, I find it made me flushed. Sometimes it gave me a bit of heartburn. It just wasn't making me feel good anymore. So it was like, I'm going to get rid of this thing. Okay. I'm going to feel better in my body if I'm not doing an old action. So anyways, so then I go to dinner and we're sitting at the dinner table and I'm out with friends and everybody, there's a drink menu. He passes around the drink menu. Everybody's ordering drinks. The drink menu gets passed to me and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, I know that I don't want to drink, but everybody's ordering a drink. And there's this one drink on this drink menu that looks really good. And so I ordered the drink. And I didn't feel bad about it. I had one drink. I had fun. It was fine. But then the next day I reflected and I'm like, what went wrong? Why didn't this new idea that I wanted, this behavior that I no longer wanted to exhibit, I don't know. I don't want to do it. Why did I do it? And I realized because I didn't accept the new identity. Okay. So pay attention to this. I went to dinner as a woman who was trying to stop drinking. And so when I got presented with the opportunity to order an alcoholic beverage and look at the menu and see the, the drinks on the menu, I was a woman who does drink alcohol that was trying not to. That's the identity I was still in. So then I had another chance and I said, I'm going to do this differently. And I thought about my brother. He's never drank, never been a drinker. It has never been anything that he has ever had any interest in doing. So I thought to myself, how does my brother behave when we go out for dinner? And I thought about him and I thought about the times we've gone for dinner. When the drink menu gets passed around, he doesn't even look at it. He doesn't care. It's not applicable to him. He doesn't care what the drinks are. So he doesn't hold it in his hand and look at it. So that's the first thing. Then I thought to myself, what are the things that I've seen my brother say? He will say, no, no, I don't drink. He'll say it out loud. No, I don't drink. And so everybody knows he doesn't drink. And I went, all right, here we go. So I went out to dinner again with a different group of friends and the same thing happened. They were all ordering drinks and the drink menu was passed around. And I sat there and I went, I don't need the drink menu because I do not drink. Right there in that moment, the action that I took, I embodied the new version of myself who does not drink. So now I'm a non-drinker. Nobody asks me if I want to drink. Now everybody just knows. And I haven't had uh, a drink since that day. Now, last week was a challenging week. And I said to myself, if there's going to be a week that I'm going to have a drink, it might be this week. But I was kidding. Um, but honestly, it can be that simple and it can be that easy. It doesn't need to be a super, super hard shift. So I use the example of alcohol and shifting into the identity of someone who does not drink. I would even go further and I, I love David I, I don't know what your um, what language you use yourself but I was talking to an old friend of mine from high school and he said to me I'm an alcoholic and I've been sober for X number of years and I said can I suggest something just a little shift and he said yeah I said what if you're not an alcoholic what if you don't identify as that anymore what if you don't drink? Yeah. So what if you don't drink? Like you just haven't had a drink. You're just a non-drinker. It takes away the judgment, the identity, the feelings around that. And he messaged me a couple months later and he, uh, he said to me, like, I, I knew him when I was like 17, 18. He messaged me a couple months later and he said, Kathleen, I stopped saying I'm an alcoholic to people. 
And now I just, I don't even crave alcohol. I don't want it. I don't think about it. So he was tied to an identity that tied him to an old craving. Anyway, so good. But this is like the little, a little example of how you can do this. And you can do this in your business. You can do this with money. You can do this with anything. How would that version, that identity of me, so the who do I need to be, how can I think like that version today? How can I feel like that version feels today? And what action can I take today that that version of me would take today in the physical form? And so the first thing people say to me as well, okay, so how do you manifest more abundance without spending money? Okay, there are a lot of things that somebody in an abundance identity can do that doesn't cost that much more money maybe a little bit but not a lot so it's things like using different types of glasses when you are drinking in your house so i always say water in a wine glass because it feels fancy it feels luxurious it feels nice right Always drink your coffee from a really nice mug instead of the paper one that you get from the coffee place. Like little things like that. Go for coffee in a five-star hotel in the lobby. Go and journal in the fanciest hotel. You don't just stay the night there. Go for the day and walk around and have a coffee and journal. Have lunch. Go to open houses. Look at house tours online. There are so many free things that allow you to feel abundance and prosperity. It's simply allowing yourself to think that. The other thing is, what would I do if I had $12 million in my bank account right now? What would I do? Immediately when you start to think about you start to plan out where that money is going to go. You're thinking like the person that has the 12 million, aren't you? Yeah, which is so, so exciting and so, so fun. So... The action piece I'm spending less time on here because it means less. Because if you're doing the other work, the action piece is the final piece to the puzzle. It's the final thing. Um, Which piece of the puzzle are you going to put together last? That's going to be the action. So what are some things? There's a lot of peak performance mentors that teach success principles right? You know, these are the top six things that the ultra wealthy do. I did a TikTok on that a few days ago, and it was so fun. These things that they do are part of it is the action piece. It's making a new decision, right? So the decisions that you're making from the past version of yourself, so Crystal, pre Miami Crystal, made a certain type of decision, took a certain amount of time to make decisions, led her to the life that she is living post miami crystal now makes new decisions she makes them faster she sticks to them we know that the most successful people in the world make quick decisions they're confident in their decisions and they stick to them this is really important because when you make a decision and then you change your mind and then you change your mind and then you change your mind you never made a decision at all and not making a decision is a decision you're deciding to be indecisive So remember that the manifestation is always on and in your decisions is where you're going to reveal. I know for me that there's different levels of awareness. There's different levels of decision making. And wherever you are on the decision making levels is okay with where you are today. We're not going to judge it. We're not going to feel bad about it, but we're going to say, how can I make a different decision today that is going to change my tomorrow? And so I give the example of people that do enroll in some of my programs. There are people who will say that the decision was easy. I heard Helen say, no, it really, it really wasn't (coughs) hard for her, but it's because she's worked on herself to a point where the decisions that she makes now feel easier. And so I made a decision for myself that I wanted to invest easier. I didn't want it to have to be so hard. I didn't want it to have to feel hard. I wanted it to feel easy and light. And so then I started asking myself, well, would I love to do this thing right now? Yes, I would. So then I should do that thing. And then anything else that tells me that I shouldn't do that thing comes from a past version of myself. Then I figure out the money. But other people do it the other way around. It's like, well, I don't have the money, so I can't do it. If you want to do something, the money will come. It's already there. It's just figuring out where it is 
so that you can use it for the use that you want to use it for. It's just different decisions. Some people need to talk to us before they decide. Some people need to know the names of the titles of the program, the lessons, and how many calls they're going to get, the dates and times of the calls and all that. It's just a different type of decision making, isn't it? But what kind of decision maker do you want to be? And then you got to make a new type of decision. So sometimes for me, it's like past Kathleen needed to know all the details. I want to ask you all the details, but I also want to be a woman who just knows and who intuitively says yes. So today, don't tell me nothing. I'm just going to do it. I did that with the last thing that I signed up for. They started to tell me. I said, don't tell me. I'm, I'm just, I already know. I, I feel like I could listen to you and I could, you could convince me even more, but I don't need it. I already know. Let's do it. Just an example of decision making. It's things with starting a business. So many people start a business, but they never actually start a business. They start a business, they get a website, they're ready to go, but they never actually sell something. So what's keeping you from that? That's the one action you need to take. Do the thing. And you just pay attention to people around you that are doing what you want to do. And you say, what are they doing every day? and start doing that. Act in the assumption that the wish is fulfilled. Tommy, it's 11.45. Should we talk about this? Yes. Is someone vacuuming at your house? Yeah, they're totally vacuuming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just middle of an event. No, no, no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't consider this. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. So, um, how do you what what do you want to say okay so um for the past two years there is so many people that have asked me to do a podcast okay it has been this common thing that is like are you doing a podcast are you doing a podcast are you doing a podcast and i've been like no 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 i, I don't want to i don't want another thing like i just it's just not, it wasn't anything that I ever really resonated with. And I didn't know how I wanted to do it. And I didn't know in what way I wanted to do it in. And then um, lately it just came to me, you know, the suggestion came again. And this time my feeling was different. And this time it was like, it actually came from a place. So honestly, before it was like, can a podcast assist me in my business? That's how I kind of asked the question before. And then it felt like, oh, uh, I don't want to do something else that can assist in my business. Like, I just feel like business is good. Things are simple. Let's not complicate it. But this time I had a different thought when it was suggested. I thought, I think people would love this. Like, I think this would be so much more value. I think it's another way that we could help people to, to bring more into their life by simply listening to Tommy and I talk. So what we decided to do with this is we we decided to do a co-host uh, podcast. So Tommy uh, co-hosts with me and to have this energy that we bring to these live events in this podcast. And so um, the title of the podcast is super, super fun. And we'll explain the title, but I want him to bring up the graphic before we explain the title. Oh, you got it. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. I wish we could hear everybody going, oh. I know, wouldn't that be so good? And like the applause from like the crowd. <laughs> um, so this is the podcast graphic. So um, we haven't posted anything about this on social media yet. So you guys are getting to see this firsthand. Um, and what I really, really wanted to do with this podcast is I wanted to use the word manifested. Not how to manifest, but to know that it's already manifested. Okay, so we wanted to use the language of from the end in the podcast title. So the manifested podcast by Kathleen Karen brought to you by Diamond Academy. I think it says somewhere on there. But the fun little the manifestation that I wanted to tell you guys real quick before we end at 12 o'clock was last night, we finally got the edit done because I was a little decisive, indecisive about the intro music. And so last night they were finally finishing off the first episode and um, it was really exciting and it sounds so good and so professional and Tommy like his voice is something else, but anyways, you'll hear it. Um, but they said last night, cause we had planned to launch it today at like 12 o'clock. And they said last night, you know, 
we're going to submit the podcast episode tonight, but it takes 24 hours to be approved by iTunes. So what do we want to do? Do we want to move the launch to Saturday so they can go listen to it right away? Or do we want to launch it today on day two, and then they'll just have to wait to Saturday to listen to it? And I almost fell for it. Like I almost allowed that to be the deciding factor. And then I said, I asked Anna, hold on. Has there ever been a time when iTunes has approved a podcast less than 24 hours? And I could tell that the answer she wanted to give me was very rarely, it doesn't happen, it takes 24 hours, you know? But she's like, yeah, yeah, I think so. And I said, okay, so when would we love the podcast to be up? And it was like, you know, first thing in the morning. And I woke up to a message from Anna at 6 a.m. that said, Kathleen, you're not going to believe this. The podcast episode was approved overnight. It took like, I don't know, 10 hours instead of 24. And it's up and it's live. So, um, so fun. Such a fun little manifestation leading in, leading into the release of um, the podcast. Were you going to play anything or they're just going to listen to it? whatever you want can we do the intro can we just quickly listen to the intro together well then check out how cool this looks too because it's already up in the you know in in itunes or in apple podcasts is part two up yeah they just posted it oh wow because part two wasn't going to come until i know okay mute yourself (laughs) Okay, I'm gonna, you keep talking, oh, no, there's somebody at my door. Welcome to the Manifested Podcast with Kathleen Cameron, a podcast dedicated to manifestation, law of attraction, and self-love for impact-driven entrepreneurs. My name is Tommy Collier, and I'll be your co-host, along with Kathleen Cameron, who is a rock star mom, an international best-selling author. She's an eight-figure coach, a highly sought-after speaker, teacher, trainer, and television star. Kathleen is chief wealth creator, CEO, and founder of Diamond Academy, and she is the perfect guide to lead you down the path of attracting more love, more money, and more success into your life starting right now. Kathleen, here we are. It's episode one of the podcast. Are you excited? I am so excited, Tommy. This has been a long time coming and finally here to start giving even more value than we've given ever before. Okay, we'll leave that little preview there. (laughs) Yay. So the, the podcast is up and live. You can get it wherever you get your podcasts. So Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Audible, all of the places, all of the things. So go listen. Episode one and two um, is out, and we're gonna we're making a commitment, Kathleen. We're going to record episode uh, one episode a week. Yes. Yep, and they're going to come out on Tuesdays. I'm so excited. I got to go pay this guy. There's a parcel with customs, and I got to sign oh for God. it. Like <laughs> seriously. Anyways, so fun. Please support us. We are so, so excited. Have a listen. It's fun. The first two episodes are just talking about my story, things maybe that you didn't know before, but we are going to bring you so much value, so much content. Um, It's going to be just another way for you to focus your attention on what you desire instead of what you don't want. So the more you listen, the more you'll be on the creative plane, the more you will learn. Um, We're super pumped. We're super excited. And I just want to say before I log off, I'll see everybody tomorrow. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be on tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be so good. We're going to do a QA. and a We're going to talk about programs. I know a lot of you have been messaging me about what programs are you opening enrollment for? What do you have? We'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, But just um you know give yourself the gift of coming on and listening and what if this becomes your quantum leap in your life coming on here with us these two days see how everybody talks about the exact event that they came through and they made the decision then it changed their life it's really powerful so i appreciate you thank you tommy thank you the entire diamond academy team i will see you guys tomorrow i'm so so grateful Bye. okay go sign your parcel okay so we'll kind of leave it there um I was going to say something. What was it? Um, well, I forgot. But um, go check out the podcast. We'll see you back for uh, for tomorrow. And um, stick around. I'll play you a song. And um, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thanks, everyone.
Have a great rest of your day.